Great. Uh, so, moving on to our speakers for tonight. And they all legitimately just introduced themselves, which makes my life a bit easier, but I will introduce them as well. So, Vid, Matt, and Christy, they all are part of the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development, it's the Data Strategy, Data Strategy and Coordination Unit. Um, so, they're investigating innovative ways to build data literacy and data confidence within our organization in Macy as well as throughout the PS. Uh, we imagine and have experienced that a lot of people in the analytics roles spend a lot of time helping non data minded people, colleagues, uh, to navigate problems. So, they're going to speak about those issues and they have a little presentation for us. So, we give a uh, warm round of applause. those things actually across the OPS. So we're starting small. We have, as you can see on the slide, an executive policy on data governance and digital governance. And we're hoping that that is going to be signed hopefully this week. Uh, our fingers are crossed that it's going to be completed at our deputy's office this week. And we're hoping that that policy is going to enable us to move a lot of these initiatives forward. And those initiatives include things like open government, open data, making sure we have data in the hands of the right people. So we have moved along this continuum since we started developing the policy. There are a lot of things that happened that are helping us. So open data is helping us. Signing on to the open data charter is helping us. We have a digital office within the OPS that's also helping us move these things along, which is great. So as you can see, right now, we are just about to finalize the policy. And that is going to take us on the journey of our information management strategy within our ministry. And we are pumped about that. We're super excited because that's going to help us tie all the pieces of these things together. And that's one of the reasons why we're here tonight, because we really want to make sure that we have education and engagement and communication as part of this strategy and as part of our plan. So what we're hoping to understand from you guys is what are the things that are taking you away from your coding and from your analytics work? We know that a lot of analysts spend time supporting their other colleagues by helping them out with minor things that really they should probably be able to do on their own. So things like navigating pivot tables or changing the presentation of charts. We know that people in this room are spending time doing that. And that's taking a lot of time away from answering some key research and policy questions that, would, that time would be better spent on. So we're going to take you through an activity, and those of you that have been attending these sessions for a while may have experienced the same type of activity before because we are stealing shamelessly uh, from slides that Alex gave us from previous presentations. So thank you, Alex. Um, so you may be familiar with the type of brainstorming activity that we're going to take you through. So our objectives of being here tonight, we want to work with you to figure out what are some enablers and barriers to engaging in advanced analytical work due to those routine tasks from your colleagues that might not be as data-minded or might, quite frankly, be intimidated by using some of the tools. So we're trying to figure out what are the best ways that we can help them to increase data literacy and data confidence so that we can do the really fun analytics work that, that we like to do and why we're all here tonight. So I'm going to turn things over to Bin, who's going to walk you through the process of the activity that we'll go through. And then hopefully we'll see some of you at our breakout session. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Oops. So I am technically minded. I don't know which way is forward. Uh, okay. Um, we're, we're actually really excited to have all of you here so that we can pick your brains. Uh, as we heard in the introductions, a lot of you bring uh, amazing backgrounds and experience, uh, and even if this is your first time at Civic Tech, we think that you can still contribute a tremendous amount of uh, insight into what are the, some of the challenges, uh, barriers, and enablers that you have encountered in your either uh, work situations or when you're consulting with other areas, and you are found finding yourselves uh, hitting a barrier with things that you would have hopefully 
um, would have been think would have been smoother in terms of your communication or working with the the other person or group of people uh, had they had this level of literacy. So we're going to walk through the exercise in a way that's structured, but then also allows for some creativity. The first part of that is to identify what those enablers and barriers are. It's going to be a fairly um, informal and, and unstructured way, so you're going to be thinking about these things by yourself first, and then putting them together uh, through a silent brainstorming exercise where you're posting them into different uh, categories of either enablers or barriers. The next part of that will be actually to start to group them together, uh, formulate some trends around categories that are similar in nature, trying to group them together so that you say, ah, that person experienced the same thing as I did, but in a sort of a different way. Uh, we are then going to start to unpack some of those and draw some uh, commonalities around them, trying to label them in by overarching themes that kind of capture the essence of all of the, the groups of, of uh, ideas that come out in a, in a cluster of uh, the ideas in the, the post-it notes. The next part of the exercise will actually be, in my opinion, the most fun part. It's the ideas bazaar. This was actually uh, when, when we saw this in, in Civic Tech slides, we were like, wow, that's an amazing idea. So the, the concept is that once you've done that first part and you've gotten all the ideas around the enablers and the barriers, you come up with a, a key proposal around how to address either an enabler or a barrier. You then pitch that idea to another person. And that other person then uh, synthesizes that idea and then rates it on the back. Then you go and find another partner, but you actually give your card to the other person to then pitch your idea. So in a way, you're actually uh, getting that idea to spread, but not for yourself. You have done your job in terms of pitching it for the first time, and then it's the next person who has the responsibility now to pitch that idea, or at least their understanding of it. So not only do you have to have a great idea, but you have to also be able to communicate it in a way that then it latches on to, they latch on to some of the key concepts around your idea so that they can pitch it to the next person. And so on and so forth. We'll do, uh, depending on how many people join us, and we really hope that all of you decide to join us, <laughs> although I'm not sure how we're gonna manage all that. Um, we'll, rate the ideas across maybe three or four times and maybe five times at the most uh, and then we'll sum up all those ideas and we'll collect them and hopefully we'll have something really uh, valuable that comes out of it that surfaces around some of maybe the top five ideas uh, and we can if we have time we'll present them back or at least we'll send it out uh, as part of the summary notes uh, to the rest of the group so that in a nutshell is the um, is a breakout session. We hope that it doesn't sound too intimidating. Uh, it's very, it's going to we'll walk you through in a very gentle way. I've already explained sort of the broad strokes what to expect, but we'll walk you through it once you join uh, the group uh, when we go to the breakout session. Uh, thank you for your time, and we really do hope you'll join us. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone sort of get the, the general uh, challenge that we're trying to overcome? Um, so, maybe this would just be flushed out from some of the exercise, but how do you address an enabler? Because I can understand how one would address a barrier in terms of the barrier where you removing the enabler. No, that's a great question. Sometimes recognizing that something is an enabler is only part of the solution you then have to propose how you actually implement that enabler or make that enabler available to people. So it's, it's uh, recognizably the same part of, like, you can view an enabler as a barrier that doesn't exist, um, or something that actually facilitates progress or change. Good question. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about how people who might not be data analysts in government participate in this and, and offer some value to this? 
Absolutely. So um, on the receiving end of it, so even if uh, even if you, you don't consider yourself data minded, you're you probably have the experience on the other end. Uh, oftentimes going to other people for the same type of question or things that you're, you may uh, be embarrassed to admit that you don't know about. So a lot of people assume that, you, that everyone knows how to use Excel. Well, there's a lot to Excel that maybe you don't know. Like the first time I saw a pivot table and how that works, I was like, whoa, I mean, I didn't have to do this manually. Uh, so some of those things that just come out of experience, don't take for granted that you have all the answers or that everyone else around you is smarter than you are. Uh, there are there's a lot of insights that I think uh, we are trying to, to gather uh, through this experience. Are there any other questions? All right, okay. so thank you. All right, thanks so much. Yeah.